Historically, the African-American church has been the saving grace for communities of color. It was in the church that the African-American voice could be expressed and heard. It was in the church that the African-American children were trained to become leaders in the community. Not only did the church offer hope, it embodied and sustained life. In 1619, 20 African slaves were sold in Jamestown, Virginia. They were the first Africans sold on American shores. While in West Africa, these slaves had been taught religion by the Portuguese and baptized into the Catholic faith. In Virginia, some white owners allowed their slaves to attend white churches, but they sat in the back or in the balcony only to hear sermons stressing obedience, respect, and duty, such as slaves obey your masters. Over time, white masters allowed black enslaved ministers to begin preaching to other slaves. And although the slave Bible was given to them, in time, the authentic Bible containing both the Old and New Testaments made its way into their hands. Slaves then began gathering in woods, ravines, thickets, even swamps for heartfelt worship and real Bible teachings which stressed deliverance and salvation. By the 1780s, in the South, a handful of black churches had formed, but in the North, the Free African Society of Philadelphia was established. From it, grew two dominant congregations, the Bethel Church, the Mother Church of the African Methodist Episcopal Denomination, and St. Thomas Episcopal Church. With the abolishment of slavery in the North in 1804, Northern black churches organized missions to the South around the late 1860s to help those newly freed slaves develop the skills and talents needed to lead independent lives. African-American missionaries such as A.M.E. Bishop Daniel Alexander Payne established educational institutions and sent missionaries to teach reading and math to those who had been denied an education. Over time, these missionary efforts led to the establishment of many historically black universities and colleges, such as the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and Morehouse College. In the years leading up to the Civil War, the black church's momentum was felt as its political and prophetic voice against segregation took center stage. In Alabama, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference known as the SCLC, was established by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, Andrew Young, and other black ministers. The SCLC's peaceful demonstrations focused on anti-segregation efforts in cities across the South. Historically, the African-American church has been the voice of inclusion and equality, even today. While many white churches choose to be silent, it has been the black church that has been the leading voice championing issues of race and revealing the heart of God for all people. The black church will continue to offer affirmation and dignity. It will continue to be the place where we can think out, pray out, and shout out the troubles of this world. It will forever remain a safe haven for all Christians regardless of color in a nation that continues to be defined by race and class.